Hey everybody, Chris State here. Today, we're going to be learning how to install Python and test if it works. If you watched my last video, you will be familiar with the fact that we will be using Python 3 throughout the remainder of this course. So let's go ahead and get into this. You need to open up your favorite browser. Today, I'm going to be using Safari. We're going to be going to the Python's website. So type in python.org. It should load the page. Now, you'll see lots of various links and, and images all over the page that lead you to documentation and jobs and getting started. And you can see success stories and news and events, cr lots of stuff. Today, we're only worried about downloads. Go ahead and click on the downloads link and, or hover your mouse over the downloads link and um, click on all releases. You might be thinking to yourself, whoa, if I hover over the downloads link, I see it right here. There's a button. We can just download it right here. Well, that's true, but I wanted us to go to the all releases page for one reason. So you can see the previous versions of Python, and I'll go ahead and talk for just a quick second about why you might want these. If you were to write code in, say, Python 3.3, and then somebody were to go ahead and update your Python version from Python 3.3 to 3.6, and you go to run your code, something might have been changed in the Python framework which causes your code to no longer work. And there should be a way to either update your code, and we'll talk about that later in this video, or revert back to an older version of Python. So if somebody is updating your Python on your machine, you should probably tell them to stop updating Python on your machine. But in the real matter of the fact, if you need to revert back to an older version or grab a previous release, go ahead and go to this page and you can grab it. We're going to go ahead and click on the link Python 3.6.3. You can see it loads it up here. Right off the bat, we get, the, we get the version number. We get the release date, which was the third of this month. And you see some of these major features and uh, changes. You might be thinking to yourself, if I were to have 3.5 before and 3.6 now, how can I see right off the bat some of the big changes or maybe new features in the in the language? They add you a, a very simple list here that will give you some uh, snippets and a few couple of uh, c comparisons to actually view those. So you can see all of these new features between the difference of 3.5 and 3.6. What we're worried about here is down at the bottom of the page, and it's the files list. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why is there so many download links? Well, for today, I'm going to be using Mac OS X, and which only has one link, as you can see here, denoting the operating system. Now Windows has a ton, and we will be talking about that, because I know a lot of users are not using a Mac. They're going to be using a Windows machine, and as seeing that my tutorial is going to be on Mac and Windows, and they're a little bit different, I'll be going over both of these. For right now, we're going to go ahead and just click on this OS X 64-bit, 32-bit installer. And while that's downloading, I'll talk to you guys about the Windows. Now you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, why is there, what is it, seven of these? Why is there so many and how do I know which one's mine? First off, there are actually only two types here. There is the 32-bit and the 64-bit. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I see 64 here, but I don't see 32 if you look into this, the x86 represents 32, and the x86-64 represents 64-bit. Go ahead and figure out which version of Windows you're running. If you need help with that, do a quick Google search, and you should be able to find this very easily. Once you figure that out, you're going to go ahead and choose the version that's appropriate to your computer. Most of you will be running 64-bit. I'm not sure how many computers are running 32-bit anymore, but we're going to go ahead and talk about the 64-bit. Now you'll see there are three different versions of the 64-bit installer. There's a web-based installer, an executable installer, and an embeddable zip file. Let's start off with the web-based installer. The web-based installer is an executable file downloaded to your hard drive. It takes up a very small footprint of stored size on your hard drive, but it does require an active internet connection to install on your machine. While the executable installer will take up a much larger file size on your hard drive, but it does not require an active internet connection to install. The third option here is the embeddable zip file, which is almost identical to the executable installer, 
with the only difference is all the files from the Xcube installer have been extracted and are ready to be used. There's one caveat to this. If you're used to using command prompt to do various terminal commands and you would like to run Python off command prompt, you will have to path it in your Windows path environment system files or system settings. I'm sorry, your system settings. You can find plenty of links on how to do that, but if you don't want to have to worry about that and getting into that, go ahead and grab the Xcubo installer, grab the web-based installer, run one of those, and you'll be perfect for the remainder of this course. As far as the installation, this is the biggest difference between Python on Mac and Python on Windows. That's the biggest difference. There's a few other quirks and different changes later on that we'll get into, and I'll make sure I walk through both steps. But this is going to be the biggest difference. So if I can get you through this video today, and you can get it installed, and you can make sure it's installed correctly, we're going to be good. We're going to go ahead and run this installer, and now that it's down, done downloading, I'm going to go ahead and minimize Safari, and open up the installer. You should see a window similar to this, and we're going to go ahead and click Continue. We're going to look at the important information, click Continue, accept the license agreement, agree. Now, you are prompted with a page here. This page is going to tell you how much space Python is going to take up on your hard drive and where it will install it. I already have Python installed, so I'm not given the option here to install it in a different location, but if you feel so inclined to install it in a different location, there will be a prompt here somewhere around the bottom to uh, allow you to install it in a customized location. You will be wondering what this customize button is. This is to install uh, certain features in Python. Uh, if, if you want to put those in there, go ahead. We're going to stick with the standard installation. Click install. You're going to want to type in your password. Once you've typed in your password, it will go ahead and install. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this because I already have it installed. And we're going to continue on the video. The next step is testing if Python works. So we're going to go ahead and go to our applications folder on Mac. If you have uh, Windows, we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that on Mac. There is something called idle. If you go to your applications folder, scroll down to Python 3.6, there is idle here. Windows has the same exact thing. Now, right before we get into that, you're thinking to yourself, wait, I can see your screen, man. You have Python 2 installed. Well, yeah, and this is the great thing about Python. You can have multiple versions of Python installed on the same machine, which is perfect for a developer. That way you can work with multiple environments at the same exact time. We're going to be worried about Python 3, though. We're going to go ahead and run idle here. Now, what is idle? If you're on Windows, go ahead and search idle in your taskbar or, you know, pull it up somehow in your search bar. But go ahead and open up idle. And this is a command line interface for the Python environment. Now, you might be wondering, what is that? If you have a Windows machine, you are used to running command prompt. And if you have a Mac, you're used to running terminal. You can see that here. With terminal. They look about the same while one is actually interfacing with the machine and one is interfacing with Python. Now we're going to go ahead and run a small bit of code to test if Python's installed correctly and see how that works. So we're going to go ahead and go to ter we're going to go ahead and go to the terminal or Python shell on the left here and I'm going to click enter and we're going to print hello world which is typically the standard test for new beginners in programming. So we're going to type in print and parentheses. Weird. Now, it just crashed. Now, it seems to actually be conflicting with my recording software on my Mac. And that's a problem because now I'm no longer to show you how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and remove this error report. And we're going to try this in terminal to see if this works. So to run the Python environment on the terminal, we're going to go ahead and type in Python 3, no spaces, and click enter. And as you can see right off the bat, there is a Python 3.6.3. We will be running uh, the same command, but using terminal. It's running the same environment. So go ahead and type in print, parentheses, hello, world. Throw some exclamation points if you want to be fancy. And another parentheses. And go ahead and click enter. And voila, you can see it printed hello world. Now you might be wondering, that dude just messed up on camera. Why did he leave that in? He has editing software. Why didn't he cut it out? Well, 
one thing you should be taking away from this video and all of my future videos is that a lot of the times with these problems, I'm not going to be cutting them out because how does that teach you? If I'm, if I'm here to teach you and you're here to learn, me cutting out all the problems is no longer going to teach you. It's going to be less of a teaching and more of a telling. And if you do end up with problems later on, you're not going to know how to fix them. So I'm here to tell you that when problems do come up, we will work through them. We will power through them. And if you do encounter a problem that I don't, search it online. Throw a comment in, in down below. It will be helped. I read all the comments. I read everything. And I will try my best to help every one of you. If not, there's plenty of people online that will be more than willing to help you. And the community of developers is so friendly and so helpful and so generous that you'll be just astounded by it. So back to the code. You can see that we wrote a little bit of code and that it is installed and that it is working great. So this will be the end of this video. If you liked it, throw the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, put the thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, obviously anytime, put it in the comments below. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.